Guys, it's been a long time coming, but I'm proud to announce that my hands are finally registered with the International Registry of Lethal Hands. This is the only place where your God-given gifts of danger can get the recognition that they truly deserve. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would anybody need to register their hands as lethal? Let me break it down for you. There are those among us whose hands are so downright dangerous, they need to be documented. Registration is a moral responsibility and it's a vote for the greater good of humanity. The sole mission of the International Registry for Lethal Hands is to catalog the most formidable hands on the planet. So if you know someone and you even suspect they possess lethal hands, do not hesitate. Register them immediately. And if you've ever looked at your own hands and thought, damn, these dogs are dangerous, don't settle. Go register. Head over to registeryourhands.com, fill out a simple form, and you're official. Remember, use the promo code jail to save 20% or just click on the link below. The great Conor McGregor, and what makes you great, by the way, when we're talking about politicking, when we're talking about understanding how to maneuver and manipulate behind the scene to have your ideas interjected in the final decision. When we talk about the greats, what do I mean, guys? How do we judge that? What's the litmus test? That your idea is the one they end up going with. That's it. <laughs> That's it right there. What's a good politician? Well, he's honest and he uh, goes through the White House doors. He does what he says he'll do and he'll... No, no, it's a guy who campaigns and no matter how insane or wonderful you think his ideas are, he gets elected and then gets it done. I mean, I'm just sharing with you, right? Like there, there is a test. So... Conor McGregor, right? And, and, and I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting to see if the great magician's got one more underneath his sleeve. Conor is not in the same position as he's usually been. Conor can generally stare at the board. He can stand back from 40,000 feet, as they like to say in an expression, but then he can see everything so clearly, as opposed to being so close to the trees that you can't see the forest, right? I'm using adages here, but Conor's not in that same 40,000 foot situation because. When he sees what needs to be done, he does not have the same flexibility to maneuver. For example, his next fight in the octagon will be against Michael Chandler. Now, that's a great opponent. Michael Chandler is wonderful. To make a point, though, that could have been anybody. What I'm attempting to say is Connor can't change the opponent. If there's some piece of the story or some piece of the market or some piece of the myth that Connor could interchange that, he's been, he's been very good his entire career to pick his opponents, whether it's changing weight classes or it's changing sports completely. But in this situation, he does not have that flexibility. His next match will be against Michael Chandler. So he's still got to get what he wants. He cannot get a title fight out of Michael Chandler. For example, not that he wants one. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you that we got a little constraint here by the great magician. And because he cannot get a title fight, He's going to have a very hard time getting a main event on a pay-per-view. No, it can be done. Of course it can be done. It could just be the number one contender match, right? Can't get a title fight, so we just back it off one step. That's generally the order you would go in. You would start with the best, and you would begin to work your way down the night. And it's not a number one contender's match. Can't do that. So how do you get that main event spot? How do you possibly be a main event spot, which is designated, and don't forget, being the champion or even the number one contendership, the reason that that's your order is not because that belt is so valuable on a poster or that the next best thing is great for talking points for the guys over at ESPN. The reason the belt and or the number one contendership is so valuable is because you're telling a story that's just one step of it is tonight. For the next part of the story, you then tune in for the next one, right? You, you get people hooked on a book. And you're taking it one chapter at a time. But if that first chapter, if you didn't need that at all to enjoy chapter two, then people would just read chapter two. And if you don't need the first two to enjoy number three, they're going to start 80 pages into the book and save themselves a few steps. So it's a very important thing to do. And, and the reason I'm choosing to point that out so strongly is I don't believe Conor McGregor would fight anybody else 
but Michael Chandler. Now, that's subsequent to the fact that he doesn't have a choice. There will be no other option. He will fight Michael Chandler or he will not fight. What I'm saying is, if that was an option, I'm not sure that Connor wouldn't just take Chandler. Like, I don't, I don't think Connor, in his heart, actually wants to cut Chandler out of this equation. Connor, at his heart, which is actually a lot nicer heart than you know, it's a lot more of a sportsman than always gets discussed, he is well aware that Red Panty Night is real, and he's also well aware this guy's got it. The same as Connor's gotten some deals because uh, the agreement got done. He would never, Floyd can never pull out, what are you doing? You already said yes? Even if you find a better option, you already said it's me? And Connor wouldn't do that to Chandler, is my belief. But I do want to share with you that within those two fighting brings a tremendous problem, which is they're fighting about nothing. And that doesn't mean we can't have fun. It doesn't mean that's not a, a good, sizable fight. I'm just sharing with you, within the organization they fight for, that's not who gets top billing. So if you're standing back and you're looking at the board and you're realizing, God, we got one miss here, which is we're fighting about nothing. We had an opportunity to make this personal, but that's long gone and we didn't take it. We did have an opportunity to do it for a belt. No matter how much people want to hear about 165 pound rumors, it just wasn't viable. And it's not a number one contendership. And quite frankly, we don't even know what weight class we're going to fight at because the other two things are true. Man. The fact that the weight class not only is not determined, it doesn't actually matter at all. Like, none of, none of you care at all what weight they fight at. But I'm sharing, the fact that you're in that spot is what shines a light on my first two examples. Okay, where I'm starting to believe that perhaps the great magician Conor McGregor does not have one under his sleeve, is I'm starting to believe he's not standing back and looking at the board the way that he used to. I'm not certain that he understands what I just said to be the holdup. And the reason I'm not certain is when he does suggest other names, and I, I just gave you a 60 second diatribe on the fact that I don't think Connor would actually fight somebody else, but he has made those suggestions. He has gone on social media, and made those suggestions to get headlined, to get a fire. He's done what Connor does. But those suggestions, whether it was Nate Diaz, whether it was Dustin Poirier, or whether it was George Mosvidal, within those suggestions has the same exact problem, which is, a title would not be contested, but neither would an impactful contenders match for the title. And there is the holdup as to why Connor's having a hard time getting the main event, and he's not going to fight unless he can get the main event, right? Like, it's one of those things. So Connor's not giving up, by the way. He's come in. He's doing angles in the media. He's realizing, hey, you're expecting this to go into this. You're expecting a little bit of a bigger bounce here. So I got to do something so special in this, in this game of checkers to cover the spread, to get you to make an exception, to put me on the top of the bill. I mean, this is what Connor is up against. And I'm just sharing with you, if anybody's got that card, it's him. But to pull that card or to manipulate any system, you must first intimately understand the situation. And based on the call-outs, based on getting into a car and crashing into the same wall over and over, I don't know if Connor does understand that. And that would be a big surprise. And I'm not certain that Michael Chandler has identified what the problem is. I'm not certain. Because Michael Chandler, while he, while he does it on the down low, well, he doesn't want anybody to know is freaking smart at this game. He's really good at this. I miss Michael Chan. I mean, he just came out of his shell when we put him on the bench. They threw to a cameo in him in Miami. He, oh, he just like flexed his arm and looked cool doing it. I popped for it. I popped for it. He was like flexing his black t-shirt on, his hair. He just looks fantastic. What I just said, that's what The Rock has, right? You could just throw to The Rock. He could do nothing. He could stand there and raise the eyebrow and the whole building goes like Chandler's got this thing and we're keeping that thing on ice. And I do believe that if, if Chandler realized, oh my gosh, we're fighting about nothing, which is just fine, which is, it's completely fine. They do 11 fights every Saturday. 10 of them are about nothing. But if you want the main event spot, if you want that top billing, that's the fight that has to be the most meaningful. At any rate, told you guys this weeks ago, told you I don't know who the skunk at the garden party is, because I know Chandler wants to fight. I think Connor is sincere, and of course the promotion would like their big star, 
and the promotion and Connor have yet to, to, to turn on each other and say who's holding it up. I told you I thought it was being held up. If I was in Dana's shoes, I can't main event him. No matter how much I like him, I can't do it. I have to be laser locked with, a, with an extreme discipline on the brand, who we are and what we are. And there are exceptions where I'll bring James Tony over. There are exceptions where BJ Penn called me, he needs another fight, man, I'm going to get it to him. There are exceptions, but there's never an exception for the main event spot. It's earned and it's coveted. And to give it to you, I have to take from somebody else. And there's policies. That is just not within the policy.